In this video, you will finally understand what is the real reason why you keep attracting narcissists in your life. Because my friend, I know how painful it can be to find yourself into this cycle of consistently abusive relationships. And let's say you're in the situation in which you just left, left a relationship with a narcissist and you're starting to heal, but then two weeks later, you already find yourself attracted to another person who seems really promising and like he's so kind and loving and seems to be so developed in life. And then you get into a relationship with them and two weeks inside of that relationship, so like three weeks inside of that relationships, relationship, you again find yourself to repeat the same patterns over and over again. You are trusting them, they lie to you, they manipulate you, they gaslight you, they like try to impose a self-image of them which is not real, which is not what they are on the inside, but they're like, this is again a form of manipulation and you find yourself believing that because you hope that eventually you will meet the right person. I know this pattern. I know this pattern because I have been the one who has, um, who has been having it in my life and I have been the narcissist, the unconscious narcissist. So, so in a way, I am, a, I am a recovering narcissist and that's why I know these patterns from the inside out. And so my intention, my friend, my intention in this video is to really help you understand this pattern share with you what is the truth and i want to warn you from the beginning that what i'm about to share by the end of this video might hurt you you will feel triggered because if you find the things that i speak about to be true about you and if you find that your body feels triggered like there are some painful emotions that come up i want to warn you that this is natural and this is supposed to happen because this is what healing looks like and if you want to let go, if you want to go um, out of this pattern of consistently finding yourself into abusive relationships, then, well, think about and contemplate on what I'm about to share with you in, in a moment. So what is the real reason? What do you think is the real reason you consistently find yourself attracted to the right, the seemingly right people who a couple of weeks later in the relationship you already find their like shadow character traits and like how they manipulate, how they're not really honest, how they're not genuine with you, how they're not congruent with um, who they say they are and who they show you through their actions they are. So why do you think, what, what is the reason? Why do you keep being attracted to people like that? What do you think it is? Because my friend, if you keep being attracted to people like that, obviously there is something inside of you that is attracted to them. And now let me know if this is true about you. I have found that for many people who keep being attracted to narcissists, they're just trying to run away from their loneliness. They're trying to desperately run away from who they are because it's true that most people haven't accepted themselves fully yet. And because they haven't accepted them fully themselves fully yet, then like, we become attracted to the hope that somebody else on the outside will accept us the way we can't accept ourselves. So it's in a way, instead of us being a servant of love and like trying to um, be loving for ourselves and then exert that love on the outside, because we are walking that self-love, then we are finding people who are also not, like they don't have that love for themselves. And uh, we are hoping that they will make us whole. So it's like you are desperately trying to prove to yourself that you deserve to be loved. And this is the reason why you keep being in these abusive relationships with narcissists. Because ultimately, my friend, they're just reflecting back to you who you are not, but you're afraid you are. And it's like who you are not, what do I mean by that? Well. Obviously, it is not true that you don't deserve love, but part of you might be afraid that this is true. And part of you might be running away from that belief. And by running away from that belief, you're projecting it outwards. And this part of you that is afraid that it's not loved, but you're hiding that part from yourself. It is being attracted to the exact people, the exact narcissist who also are not like they haven't accepted themselves fully. And that's why they're trying to manipulate others 
so that they can prove to themselves that they're worthy of love. And this is what manipulation looks like. And again, I'm tell telling you that from my own experience. I have found for myself that before I healed that pattern and before I abandoned that part of myself, which was consistently being attracted to uh, people who are much more developed than me, I was, I was like feeling that um, I don't deserve their love. And I wanted to prove to myself that I deserve their love. And that's why to prove that to myself, I needed to prove that I am lovable. So I needed to, in a way, um, manipulate a self image, which I didn't believe about myself on the other person. This is how narcissist works. So listen carefully here. I was feeling unworthy of my partner's love. And I wanted to manipulate myself into believing that I am worthy of their love. And that's why I was trying to impose on their mind a belief system about me, which wasn't congruent with who I was in the, like on the inside, in my heart. And like, this is again, the way narcissists manipulate their victims and get into a relationship with them. And then from there, of course, all the abusive tactics start uh, um, like happening one after another. So I'm telling you that so that you can understand the pattern and see that instead of you chasing love on the outside because you don't feel you deserve that love on the inside you can actually become a servant of love so instead of chasing that love you can be an example of that love but to be an example of love and to have real genuine love in your relationships and attract a healthy partner with whom you can have a committed intimate long-term relationship really deep and like really like a partner who is also emotionally available for you to have and attract that partner you need to have a clear vision so and you need to be more attached to the vision you have of your partner than you're attached to a specific person that gets attracted into your life with whom like you put all your hope that they're the right one and then a couple of weeks later or months later in the relationship you already start finding all the blind spots that uh, naturally you become aware of. Um, so can you see this difference between being attracted to one specific person and hoping that they will completely complete you and the other perspective, which is being attached to a vision you have of what you want from your relationship. And then when you pursue relationships, you're just communicating what your vision is and you're trying to find a partner who is in alignment with your vision or, or who has a similar vision to yours. Can you see the difference between, between those two things? Because if you're attached to the vision, then you wouldn't be attached to a specific person. And you wouldn't be in this pattern of constantly having to enter into relationship with narcissists because uh, you're, you have a vision which is more important that, than trying to be saved by one specific person who you will hope will finally make you whole. Because my friend sorry to tell you that but it is not possible for somebody on the outside to make you whole on the inside so if you don't find yourself being whole and complete on the inside this is your responsibility you cannot delegate that responsibility to another person on the outside because if you do again you are hoping that they will save you you are chasing love instead of being and radiating that love and the way to um, like to shift that is that you become attached, to become more attached to the vision you have of your ideal partner than you are attached to one specific person. And like, what does it look like to be attached to a vision? And how do you clarify the vision you have of an ideal partner? There are ultimately three questions you need to ask yourself and answer really honestly. So it takes a little bit of time. Like, you need to really contemplate those questions so that you can get the answers from the inside. And the first question, and I, I've also prepared like, um, I'll explain them in this video, but if you look into the, in the description, I've prepared like uh, the three questions, healthy boundaries framework, which you can download for free. And here you get a more like in-depth explanation of how this question works and how you can ask them and get those honest answers from the inside. So you can follow that link on the, in, in the description below and uh, get this uh, asset for free to apply it in your life. So here is what are those three question, questions. First of all is what I am not willing to tolerate in my relationships anymore. And you need to be really clear with that. Like what is it that you don't tolerate? Is it manipulation? 
Is it lack of respect? Is it like, uh, is it like lack of validation for your feelings? If you want somebody who is emotionally intelligent, for example, is it, um, is it lack of quality time spent together? What is it that you don't tolerate? What is it that you don't tolerate? Ask yourself this question. The second one is, what do you want? Like, what do you dem almost demand? What, is, what, is, what are your needs in a relationship? What do you need with your partner? For example, in my case, I know I need somebody who is emotionally available because, and like, who is also, who's, who is also emotionally transparent, who wants to spend quality time with me, who wants to be intimate with me. I know these are needs I have. And if my partner is not able to like, uh, fulfill those needs, he just doesn't align to my vision. So we cannot pursue a relationship together. So what are your needs? What do you need from your partner? Who do you need them to be? And then the third question is, what can you give? So what can you give from yourself to the relationship? What are your gifts that you can like give from yourself as an offering for that relationship? Because if, you're, if you want to be in a position in which you can demand something, then you obviously need to give something in return. So, and like what you need and what you're able to give, they can be the same, but they can also be a little different. So for example, you may need encouragement from your relationship. You may need your partner to encourage you in your creative, um, in, in your creative endeavors in life, in your career, in your professional life. And you might need that encouragement, but you might be able to give him care, which are a little bit different because encouragement, for example, like, Words of encouragement, they're, they're more like, uh, more focused towards growth, development, so on and so forth. While care, care is a little different. Care is more about validating feelings, more about being there with your partner in his hard moments. And let's say care may be something that you can give, but encouragement may be something that you need. And this is how you can balance this out. So if you're aware of what you can give to that relationship, if you're, if you're aware of what you need from your relationship, from your ideal romantic partner. And if you're aware of what you don't tolerate, what you're not willing to fall up for, then this is your vision. This is like, these are the foundations of your healthy boundaries. And then my friend, you become more attached to that vision than you become to any person who enters your life. Because that vision will be your North Star, will be your guiding sign. This is what will keep you in alignment with what you need from your relationships. And again, if you need help with that, you can go to the description below and uh, download this uh, resource I have, the three questions, healthy boundaries framework, because it will help you a lot to going through this process. And again, my, as I told you in the beginning, my intention on this video was to show you what is the real reason why you keep attracting narcissists. And the real reason again, is because you're trying to find somebody who will save you, which is not possible. Like, you first need to become the person you want to, to be in a relationship with. That's why you need to have a vision. And that vision, you need to be in alignment with it so that other people can then naturally reflect who you are on the inside. So instead of you hoping that you'll find somebody who will complete you, you'll, complete your, you'll feel complete within yourself when you commit yourself to that vision. And once you feel complete within yourself, then you attract other people who are complete or who are also on the journey of healing and you can heal together inside the relationship, which is also a really beautiful process. It, it's actually something inevitable, which, will, um, which naturally happens in long-term committed uh, relationships, which are, like, which are growth oriented. So this is a transition you need to make again, to just sum it up. Instead of being attached to one specific person who enters your life, and then hoping that they will be the one, they will be the right one. And then be, being really naive because they start manipulating you with a uh, whack of their own, of, whack of their own self word. Because if they don't feel worthy, they'll start manipulating you to, this is again how narcissists work. They'll manipulate you to prove to themselves that they're worthy to have you in your life. And this manipulation, you almost feel as if it's like uh, a, an emotional blackmail. And then, Obviously, this is not love. This is attachment. This is trauma-based attachment. And because this is, this is how you become too hopeful that somebody else will save, save you instead of you saving yourself. But when you become attached to that vision that I just shared with you in this video, then you'll naturally attract people who are also 
in alignment with their visions. They have a vision of their best romantic relationships. And then when you meet, you just have to see if your visions align to a sufficient extent that you can actually have something together, like you can experience life together, which makes relationships so much easier, my friend. So if you are really committed on like uh, not attracting narcissists anymore, this is exactly what you need to do. And if you also enjoy this video, like it, comment down below, let me know what has been your experience and subscribe to this channel. I am Daniel, nice to meet you. Uh, because in this channel, Soulful Relationships, I'll be creating videos which are exactly for that purpose, to help you align and attract and like surround yourself by only conscious, uplifting and meaningful relationships with all the people in your life friends, family, romantic partner, business partnership, every kind of relationship can be uplifting, can be healthy and be, can be meaningful. So this is my intention with this channel. So if, you, if this is something important for you, subscribe to it and I would love to see you in the future videos. This was everything I wanted to share for today and uh, I will see you in the next ones. Love you, bye-bye.